Hey, smart Christians, welcome back. I was asked to cover a passage in Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And at first, well, first of all, when you first think of the passage, when you first look at it, you think, okay, this is pretty straightforward, just to kind of give an understanding. But then when you just do a little bit of research and just see, wait a second, there might be a little bit more to the text. And so let's cover this particular passage and see what it actually says. At first glance, when you look at it, the thing that normally comes to mind will be, well, this word that's not even here in the ESV, but you'll see it in the King James Version, this word that we call reprobate. It says, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not be done. Now, when you look at that word, you're going to notice the word reprobate or debased. And you see the word reprobate that will show up typically in a King James Version or New King James Version. And so the question that's going to show up or ask, be asked is, what does it mean to be a reprobate? Now, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and pull it up where we've got all three kind of there in comparison in Romans 1, 28. And so we'll see. And even here's the King James Version on the left side. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. And then over here in the ESV, the base mind. And so... Sometimes words become how we read our Bible, what we see it as, will be subject to the translation that we have. And so to kind of figure out what this word means, reprobate, let's go with that, that word, reprobate, because that word is kind of taking on, uh, taking on a meaning of its own. Even in Western culture today, we will still use that term reprobate. What does that word mean? Well, interestingly enough, the word really doesn't show up a lot in the Bible uh, if we go to the Old Testament, and we're going to use the, uh, we'll use the NASB in this case, we're looking at different translations, but in the NASB with that word reprobate is there. Let's see what it says in Psalm 15.4. As a matter of fact, let's start in Psalm 15.1. O Lord, who may abide in your tent, who may dwell on your holy hill, he who walks with integrity and works righteousness and speaks truth in his heart, he does not slander with his tongue nor does evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend in whose eyes a reprobate is despised, but who honors the Lord, who fears the Lord. Uh, he swears to his own hurt and does not change. And so we see this word reprobate here. This word reprobate comes from, I'm sorry, this word reprobate comes from the Hebrew word ma'as, which means to reject. That word here is used it doesn't really make sense because to reject is a verb, but it says in whose eyes a to reject. Now there's a cousin to this word in, in the Greek. And so I think we ought to go to the Greek and look at this as well and see how this is posed in the Greek, which might help as well. Let's go back to it over here in the, in the, uh, uh, the New Testament, Romans 1, 28, the word that's used here for this word reprobate is adokimon. Well, this word is based off of the word dakimas. So let's go ahead and click on this word and let's just see exactly what this word means uh, in the Greek. Initially, if we just look up the root of the word dakimas, it means to prove, to test, to verify, to examine. Well, that's the root of the word, but then let's go down to the BDAG and let's look and see what the word adakimas is, which is the word we're talking about. Let's click on it and let's just find out what it tells us. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you guys can see over here. And let's make it a little, bit, look a little bit bigger. Now, this word means not standing the test, then unqualified, worthless. Well, these are adjectives, and that can be a problem because if we're talking about adjective, it doesn't seem like that's what this is speaking of here. What is a reprobate? A reprobate, we're speaking of a noun, but it's giving us an adjective. And so a person who is unqualified, is that what a reprobate is? Okay. A person who is rejected? Okay. Well, the way the word is really used is to speak of one, what God does to them, but also how they are. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this out is because it actually leads us into really what God is saying. And there's some, some bit of theological importance here in the passage. So now, and I know we're taking a long route to look at what this word actually means, but I think it's going to be helpful. So let's go back to it and let's start a little bit further before we get to verse 28. Let's start in, let's start in verse 26. For this cause, 
God gave them up unto, unto vile passions or vile affections, for even their women did not change, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men working uh, that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And of course, that's the King James Version of, of saying. So let's go over here. And it says, and the men likewise gave up the natural relations with women and they were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts, which men with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty of their error. And here we go in verse 28. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased or reprobate mind to do what ought not be done. Now, so God gave them up to a debased or to a reprobate mind, the adjective. But typically when we describe reprobate, we also use it in the sense of a noun. Now, what we're talking about here is what God did. Reprobate means to reject, and so God rejects them. God passes over them. God just leaves them as they are. But I want you to notice something about the passage that I think makes a big theological statement. It says, even they did not like to retain in God their knowledge. God gave them over to their rejected, their debased, their reprobated mind to do those things which are not convenient. Meaning these people had their own choice to do what they want to, and they would not. They would not uh, adhere to one, the natural rule, the natural order of things, in this case, men with men, women with women and so forth. And God gave them or just left them like they are. Well, this seems to indicate that there might have been uh, a bit of choice on their part. Why am I bringing that up? Well, some people bring up this issue as to whether a person can choose to do right or choose to do wrong, or we are just um, enable, incapable of doing right. In other words, we're incapable of choosing. The Calvinists would take the position that we are totally depraved so much so that we are unable to choose right and thereby also to choose God. Others take the stance that who don't have that view is that mankind is not incapable, but just unwilling. That mankind is not incapable, but just unwilling. And so therein lies the issue. Well, it seems to be that they have the ability to choose. And so since they chose something other than, than the natural use of things, God left them in that state. God decided, I'm going to leave you like you are, and I'm not going to change. I'm not going to do anything with it. I'm not going to fix your minds because you are so debased. You are so, you have, as a matter of fact, even to borrow the, the word that's used here, you have so rejected the natural order of things, which is also a good use of the word. You have so rejected those things that I'm going to leave you as a rejected person. Now, maybe it's not saying all of that, but there, there seems to be something that's there that seems to indicate uh, that person's natural ability to choose, although they seem to naturally choose, these people especially, choose something vile, something just utterly sinful. Let's go back to it. Verse 29 says, being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, Maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despite, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient parents, without understanding, um, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that which commits such things, they are worthy of death. Not only do they not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And so these people understand and know the difference between right and wrong, but they choose wrong. As a matter of fact, they choose to not only um, indulge in it, but they have great pleasure, in it, as the Bible says. And so they even give approval to those who practice such things, which we see now. We see people who are involved in all sorts of things who also not only do they want you to accept what they're doing, they want you to give approval to others who are doing the exact same thing. As a matter of fact, not give approval, but let's promote it. Let's celebrate it and let's promote it. We see that in the sexuality uh, of Americans, uh, of people in Canada, of people in Europe, people in South Africa, South America, um, in, in Europe, all over. We see this happening. And of course, this is what the Bible says. And so God has 
left them in their choice to do so, which is why I say, and I'll never fight someone who will say that we don't have uh, the ability to make choices. We do. We absolutely do. And we see that here. They made their choices and God left them in their choices. But then there are others, though, who God seemed not to leave in their choices because their choices weren't as vile as these people. And so uh, the problem is that the word has kind of become the, the, the norm or has, has, has gained some usage, but the use of the word reprobate varies. It's an adjective, but sometimes we use it as a noun to call a person, you are a reprobate, uh, or an adjective to state that that's the kind of mind that you have. Either way, that person, if a person is a reprobate, if a person has that sort of thinking, God has stated that he has left them. Now, the question is going to be, though, I don't have the answer. Are Is that to say that the people even in the future after Romans, is that to say that God will do the exact same thing with them? I probably wouldn't go that far because we see people who once looked that like that, who once felt that way, acted that way, who have come out of that lifestyle, uh, who have come to see Christ. And we know that that's only a work of, of the Lord, which means that that God did not leave them in that state. And so there's a difficulty with this particular passage is that he, is he just speaking of those at that time and prior? Because it couldn't be going forward because we see people or the people that we see who had this change in their life. Is it that they were just not as reprobate as these people? And so I'll let you make your judgment. I'll let you make your, your decision. But it seems there's a lot of different things that we can pull out of that. But uh, going into and seeing what the, the meaning of the word and how it's used uh, can be a little bit more confusing at times. But I think it's safe to say that these are people who at that time and prior who just would not uh, yield. They are so vile in their lust and their passions. Uh, but then again, we do see that here today. And so therein lies a little problem, don't you see? Therein lies a little bit of problem because maybe this attitude is still here. And then, and if that's the case, what do we do? If that attitude is still here, and if there are people who are so reprobate, who are so debased in their thinking that they will not come, is that to say that we, we don't witness to them, that we don't share the gospel with them, that we don't try? Well, the problem is we just don't know who that person is. We don't know how far gone the person is. We don't know how far committed the person is because there are people who seem to be committed to sin who end up coming to Christ. And then there are some people who seem like they might listen, but they end up digging in even further. So we just don't.